So I work for Boston Scientific as a Chief Transformation Officer and uh, GBS leader for Asia Pack. I've been with Boston Scientific from uh, last one year, a great journey. Uh, prior to Boston Scientific, I was with Ernest Young, a part of the Global Shared Services Centers. I have experience in setting up centers across the globe, um, in India, in Poland, in Dalian. So that's where my expertise comes into place. Uh, I'm a finance uh, uh, from background, uh, but I've been into shared services for the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. So transformation, uh, we are looking into uh, for every function, the support function primarily, the finance, HR, and supply chain, and other areas, and the marketing, uh, where we want to look into three elements for every function. One is how does the function provide value, deliver value to the business? What is efficiencies this function should really look into? And the third bigger element is how these functions can really support growth of the Boston Scientific Organization. So in terms of finance, we really want to help the finance uh, professionals in the organization doing meaningful work. When I define meaningful work, when I say meaningful work, it is all about they focusing on analytics, getting into more financial reporting and not really doing a transactional work. So how can we really evaluate and elevate the work into more value-focused work, uh, business insight driven, more analytics focused versus the routine you know, transactional way of doing. So we are looking at automating a lot of the transactional part of the accounting work so that the accounting professionals in the organization can really able to do more value added work. Yeah, so always uh, when you're entering into a new space, it's always good to start with small. So what we did is we did some proof of concept of pilots in some of the accounts payable processes, um, some of the uh, manual general entry processes. And we realized that you know it is it is it's feasible, and we also looked into processes like customer support, right? And um, which is really helping from external partners. So we have our BPO partners uh, for Boston Scientific, who also you know part of our journey. So they manage a lot of our processes, the financial and customer service processes. So what we did is that we have taken their help and and partnered well. And we also signed up with a, with, a, with a global vendor in terms of RPA, a global contract, where uh, we are using those expertise to start implementing this RPA journey. So I think what we started doing is the first part is the governance for an RPA journey. The reason I say is we created a center of excellence of governance uh, in our headquarters in Boston. And that team actually creates the whole framework. How do you start? What is the documentation? Because a lot of documentation you need to make. You need to have a structured report of governance and so that you're controlling the change. And especially the, the Boston Scientific is a medical device company is highly regulated. So we can't just change processes. We need to have a very stringent process of the change. And when we are in track, and, and IT plays a very big role in this, right? Because the IT from Boston Scientific, we have our own controls and security uh, you know, things, which, which the, our third party vendor also have to take care of. So it's a great partnership and helping and bringing the third party partners in the IT space as well to integrate with our systems and, and security and controls. And then we really looked into what is the approach we should take to really implement these kind of um, RPA journey. So as part of the governance which I talked about, policies are nothing but, what, so the policy is around what is it you can change, what you can't change. So how do you move from a proof of concept where we see that it is successful into a business case. So the proof of value also had to be there. If not, you end up just creating bots which may not really actually deliver value. So what is a prioritization mechanism when you're going against a process for you to automate? So you're defining policies around what should be the business case, who approves those business cases, how do you prioritize, what is a team who has to be involved, right? You need to create a core team of project managers, core team of an IT, and part of the business. So you bring all these folks together and then they work together and deliver on a, on a project basis. As a finance pro, uh, function, right, so they look into big three buckets, if I say it. One is they look into controls, they look into the whole financial analysis, and third is accounting, right, three big buckets. But most of the finance professionals, because of the lot of manual activities, they end up spending time too much into accounting, too much of time into, you know, controls. But what really they support in terms of growth is the analysis. So if they can provide meaningful analysis of the numbers, what they're seeing on a day-to-day -day basis, and give that analysis on a real-time basis to the business, the commercial leaders, they can make more informed decisions. What happens in most of the time in most of the organizations is you send a report at the end of the month, but can you really give them more real-time so that the decision process becomes more easy and effective? 
And how are you managing that real-time delivery? So that's again, that's a journey what we initiated as a finance transformation um, for the Boston Scientific, where we are hiring a lot of um, talented pool because you need to build a capability of the resources. We also need to capability in terms of process maturity. So we're working both together and bringing these um, new talent. And that's where I, I really talked about yesterday in the conference about the capability building. But that's going to be very key in terms of how do you really engage uh, people. You know, when you hire a talent people, you need to also keep them engaged. So what is the kind of meaningful work you can give them where you're automating a lot of transactional work and focusing the energy into more of business insights. So when you have the right business insights, the, the right decision making will happen. When you have the right decision making happen, the growth will follow. So that's the uh, you know, theme. And uh, I just want to add one more thing from a GBS point of view, right? So as the GBS is, is maturing from a global business services to global capability services, and I call it now in the future of 2020, 2025, which is more of a global intelligence center. So global business services always focuses on operational excellence. But for you to move into a global intelligence center, you need to move from an operational excellence to digital excellence. So you need to focus that the new theme is digital excellence. If you get into a space where it is a digital excellence, and that's where you're going to move your journey from a global business services to capability and then global intelligence services. Absolutely, I think this is um, fantastically organized since the first time the team has contacted me and I've seen how professional they are, um, how rigorous in terms of process, ensuring the logistics, the right follow-ups, um, you know, very talented team, I should say. And I met a lot of great speakers. Um, I learned from them what the companies are doing. Uh, fortunately, I was also part of the jury, so which gave me an opportunity to look into what other companies' best practices are. I think a lot of a lot of uh, passion is there in this uh, in this event. Um, a lot of ideas, uh, which I really liked, and also in terms of um, the whole participants, right? Very mature, very diverse, very experienced, and they're coming from you know globally. So which is makes this event more special. And um, Singapore is, is is the best place, and, and the venue is um, the best. So I'm really, uh, really happy and very, uh, very glad that I was uh, being part of this uh, event. So if you look at the Asian um, centers, right, it is multicultural. Uh, that's, that's a great advantage, I would say. Um, certainly a cost is a big advantage, right? And also very important is the talent. Um, the talent is very diverse. If you look at people working in India, in China, in Singapore, they have a lot of a global view as well. They are not just uh, you know, closed into just an Asia Pac view. So they come with very wide and, and, and diverse experience, and that really adds value. They come with a lot of industry experience, so that is also, and the adaptability for change in this region is very, very fast. So that's what I would say are the very key strengths and the value this Asia Pac region and the talent and the professionals in this uh, region adds value to the global organizations.